Welcome back to our channel, where we bring you practical courses from seasoned engineers. Today, we're diving into the world of the Raft Algorithm, a consensus algorithm that we've detailed in our course, Reliable Web Servers with Go. Now, let's imagine your back-end infrastructure as a group of overworked interns. They're susceptible to failure, whether it's from too much coffee or not enough sleep. Likewise, servers are also susceptible to failure, whether it's from a coding bug or disk failure. These failures can be as unpredictable as they are inevitable. This is especially critical if you're only running one instance of your service. When a failure happens and your service goes down, not only will it take some time for you to be alerted about this failure, but it will also take even more time to address and resolve this failure. Every minute of downtime is devastating to any online business. It will experience lost customers, lost revenue, or severe damage to its brand reputation. One way that we can mitigate the impact of a failure is to spin up more instances of our service. For example, if we run multiple instances of our service across many different regions around the world, even if one fails and goes offline, there will still be others running and keeping the service afloat with zero interruption, with all of these instances, or nodes, working together to keep the service afloat. What we have created is a distributed system. As with any distributed system, we start coming across a common problem, consensus. Given that all of these nodes are copies of each other, how do we get all of the replicas to stay in sync and consistent so that, regardless of any failures, all of the replicas are up to date with the latest data? For example, let's say you register a username for a new account. Underneath the hood, a database processes a transaction that creates a new record for your account. Suppose the data for this database exists on several replicas, and your username only ends up on one of these replicas. If other clients are reading data from any of the remaining replicas, then the username will mistakenly be reported as available for registration. We need to make sure that all of the replicas agree that the username has already been taken. We can solve this problem with a consensus algorithm. A consensus algorithm coordinates all of the nodes within a distributed system to come to an agreement or achieve consensus on a value. There are many consensus algorithms. For example, there's Proof of Work, which involves nodes solving difficult mathematical puzzles to validate transactions and record them on the blockchain. You may already know this as mining. The solution serves as proof that miners expended significant computing power to validate a transaction. Proof of Work is the underlying mechanism for consensus in popular decentralized networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum. The Paxos algorithm, a legendary computer science algorithm that was first introduced as a theoretical solution to distributed consensus in a 1989 paper titled The Part-Time Parliament by computer scientist Leslie Lamport. The Paxos algorithm is one of most commonly used consensus algorithms in distributed systems. It is used by Apache Zookeeper and Google's Chubby Distributed Lock Service. However, given the Paxos algorithm's reputation for being difficult to understand and implement, today I want to talk about an alternative consensus algorithm that's designed to be much easier to understand and implement. Raft Raft was first proposed in a 2014 paper titled In Search of an Understandable Consensus Algorithm by Diego Ongaro and John Ousterhout. Raft tackles the problem of consensus through single leader election and log replication. To understand how they solve consensus in a distributed system, let's imagine a distributed key value server that runs on a cluster of three nodes. Each node or replica hosts a state machine, log, and raft protocol. In the context of distributed systems, a state machine is a fancy term for a program that's replicated. 
For our scenario, the state machine that's hosted on each replica is a server that features endpoints for interacting with the key value store, such as a GET endpoint for retrieving a value from the store by a key, a POST endpoint for setting a key with a value in the store, a DELETE endpoint for deleting a key and its corresponding value. If we replicate this server onto each of these nodes, then as long as they all begin with the same state and perform the same operations in the same order, then they will all end up with the same state. This process of replicating state machines across nodes and sending these nodes the same sequence of commands is commonly known as state machine replication. Anytime a replica receives a command, such as setting a new key with a value in the store, the replica appends and saves the command as a new entry in its log. These commands get fed to the replica's state machine as input. Every replica's log must always contain the same exact sequence of commands for the replicas to remain synchronized. So the question now is who sends commands to these replicas? That's where single leader election comes in. Each replica in the cluster can take on any of the following states, but can only take on just one state at any given time. Follower, candidate, leader. All replicas start out on the follower state. Any replica that's a follower can only accept commands. When no leader is present or is unresponsive, the followers must elect a new leader. A leader is responsible for receiving requests from a client and sending commands to followers. Only the leader can receive requests from a client. In case the client tries to send a request to a follower, we place a load balancer in front of the cluster to redirect this request to the leader. This ensures all requests go to the leader. Each follower sets an election timeout which is a specific time interval within which the follower must hear back from a leader. Raft randomizes the election timeout for each follower, but typically, the election timeout falls within the range of 150 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds. The moment a follower reaches its election timeout and it does not hear back from a leader, the follower becomes a candidate, initiates an election for a new leader, and votes for itself. To request votes from other followers, the candidate sends a request votes message to them and waits for them to reply back with their votes. Request votes is one of two types of remote procedure calls, or RPCs, that's employed by the RAFT protocol for in-cluster communication. The message includes information about the total number of entries in a candidate's log and the term of the latest entry. A term is a counter value that represents an arbitrary time period during the lifetime of a raft cluster. Each replica starts with a term of zero, and each replica maintains its own term. The term increments any time an election begins. An election can begin for any reason, whether it's brought about after a leader goes offline or if the network experiences enough latency that a follower reaches its election time out despite a leader still being alive. Followers will not vote for the candidate if there are any inconsistencies in the candidate's log. If the candidate receives the majority of votes from followers, then the candidate becomes the new leader. If the candidate fails to be elected, then the candidate reverts back to being a follower. Once a leader has been elected, the leader emits append entries messages to followers within the RAF cluster. Append entries is the other type of remote procedure calls, or RPCs, that's employed by the RAFT protocol for in-cluster communication, and it serves as both a heartbeat mechanism and tells followers to replicate new log entries. A heartbeat timeout determines how often these messages are sent to followers so that they know the leader is still alive. Now let's take everything that we've learned so far and see what happens when the leader of our raft cluster for our distributed key value server receives a request from a client to set a key with a value in the store. Upon receiving a request from a client, the leader appends the set operation as a new entry in its log.
Note that appending a new entry in the log does not actually perform the operation. We would need to commit the entry for the operation to be performed. For this to happen, we need a majority of the followers to have this operation appended to their logs. And so, to replicate this entry across all of the replicas, the leader sends append entries messages to the followers in its cluster. Upon receiving an append entries message, a follower performs a consistency check to verify that its log is identical to the leader's. After passing the consistency check, the follower appends this set operation as a new entry in their logs. Once a majority of followers have written this new entry to their logs, the leader commits the entry and applies it to its state machine. Essentially, we now have a replica in our cluster that has updated their key value store with the new key and value. Then, the leader sends append entries messages to the followers in its cluster. But this time, to notify followers that the entry has been committed and that they too should commit the entry. And with that, the cluster has now come to consensus about the state of the distributed key value server. This is known as log replication. With log replication, replicas agree on a sequence of values, not on a single value as with the Paxos algorithm. A benefit of having a single leader is that it guarantees linearizability, the strongest consistency model. But at the same time, scalability can be an issue. Having every client request go through a single leader can become a bottleneck, especially when the leader requires acknowledgement from a majority of followers for every single operation. Nevertheless, the Raft algorithm is used by a number of HashiCorp's technologies, such as Consul, Nomad, and Vault, and by popular databases like MongoDB and CockroachDB. In fact, CockroachDB has a blog post on scaling Raft, which I've linked in the description of this video below. If you are looking for a production-ready implementation of the Raft algorithm for own projects, then have a look at New Raft, a C++ implementation of the Raft algorithm by eBay, and Raft, a Golang implementation of the Raft algorithm by HashiCorp. Both of them are linked in the description of this video below. If you would like to learn more about the Raft algorithm, then you can read the original In Search of an Understandable Consensus Algorithm paper, which I've linked in the description of this video. Please comment below on other topics that you would like us to cover in future videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. If you would like to learn how to build your very own distributed key value server with Go and the Raft consensus algorithm, then check out our course, Reliable Web Servers with Go, which I've linked in the description of this video below. Bye.